Like maybe many of us, I have a love-hate relationship with innovation in technology and design. On one hand, I'm very enthusiastic and even excited about all the great developments going on. But on the other hand, I see a great disruption taking place and I'm very concerned about it. There are many side effects of digital innovation. Um, to quote Marshall McLuhan, we shape our tools and then these tools, these tools, this, these tools shape us. So the design we were once open and enthusiastic about design us back for good and for bad. Uh, digital innovation has been driven by the principles of usability, ergonomics, efficiency, functionality, but not so much by a deeper understanding of ethics and specifically ethics of design. No wonder that today we struggle with large ethical problems related to technologies such as privacy violation, unjustified data collection and exploitation, uh, lack of transparency of the tools we use. I looked at uh, curricula of different art universities and design academies around the world and not many of them have uh, courses in ethics of design. It's a forgotten topic, not taken care of. Um, I find it a big mistake. Ethics should be placed in the center of design education. Something has to be done about that. Um, let's look at a couple of examples in which that responsibility of the, the designer could be brought back into, uh, into our reflection on technology. What often happens is that design is happening first, then it's applied, distributed, and uh, there's not much of uh, involvement of the designer after a specific design has happened already. So the designer should be more involved in the process of using tools, social media, platforms, apps, and so forth, and also the user should be more included in the very design process, a lot more than it is happening right now, with all these ethical concerns involved, of course. So let's look at some uh, examples illustrating that. For instance, dating apps. Swiping left, swiping right, nexting people, expresses from my point of view, certain Western liberal values. We can do what we want, relate to whoever we want. Fair enough when it's done here in, in our uh, environment here. But as technology goes globals, global, it reaches to different remote places uh, where certain local customs, local traditions might collide with these Western uh, liberal values. So, uh, think of the countries of the Global South, for instance, no, just to take an example. Uh, let's go, for instance, to India with our dating app, where we have arranged marriages, um, caste system, uh, specific family traditions related to uh, yeah, forming new, new relationships. What can we do? Of course, the responsibility now, as designers didn't take enough of responsibilities, now delegated on the user. So the user, of course, we have free will. We can use uh, such a dating app or not. We are confronted, challenged by uh, this uh, situation. What design can do? Well, I was working with uh, some students of design in India, speculating about maybe a possibility to involve parents <laughs> of a potential couple <laughs> in the very process and decision making on the best match. Okay. I'm not saying this would work, but I have a sympathy for this type of activity in design where we are trying to take into consideration the local practices, local customs. Otherwise we would just colonize the rest of the world with specific solutions that might not be uh, sensitive enough to the, to, the local, to the local situation. 
And also if we reflect on, for instance, dating apps in general, many people struggle forming long-lasting relationships. Somehow the design of that app, the very interface, maybe expresses this idea of like more casual, short-term, like even there's an economic model behind this platform that it's as much about dating, dating as much as about breakups, because the more breakups there are, the more people the more users would actually come back to the platform. <laughs> so I was also thinking like, why don't we think of coming up with a different design practice for apps? For instance, an app for maintaining the relationship you already have. <laughs> again, I don't know how such a design could look like, but I again sympathize with this idea, hey, maybe designers uh, can take a little bit more effort to actually listen to our needs because many people want to find long-lasting relationships. So what can we do about that? It's all very complex. All these ethical, moral issues are, are highly complex. So I'm not saying it's easy, but I do think it's important to look into these, into these topics. We're all very different. We all come from different backgrounds. We have different needs and different stages of our life while we have quite a unified technology often, right? We all more or less same platforms. There's not enough of uh, uh, fine-tuned design decisions custom made customized for our needs. Uh, so speaking of these long-lasting relationships, uh, we can learn something from, let's say, birthday notifications on social media. You have many friends and friends, <laughs> which might be your enemies for real. And then you log on onto the social media platform and then you get, uh, you, you are being reminded that someone has birthday. Maybe you can wish him or her a happy birthday. I like the, the underlying, I, I like the, the, this proposal that we should be good to each other even if we don't really care <laughs> at that very moment. It's good. It's a, new, it's a new warm culture built around these birthdays. Of course, that's the, what we see on the surface, but as we are concerned about the ethics, we start digging into it further and think, hey, but maybe it's not really about changing the world and making a better place. Maybe it's about getting us more on the platform, again, coming back to the platform to, uh, to get to receive birthday wishes and to give them to the others. So it's always very, very complex. Um, another example, a period tracking apps. So women can report, monitor on the platform their menstruation cycle and in some cases uh, uh, partner or partners can follow that information feed, so subscribe to it. So it creates, I would say, a very interesting concept of some form of empathy, right, for how the inner workings of female body and mind. I think it's good for the relationship, so it's deeply also feminist uh, in nature, right? And ethically fine, I would say. What I also learned though, that in more conservative circles, this is seen as a natural form of birth control. Against maybe more artificial forms of contraception. So it's a very interesting because from different angles, left and right, progressive and conservative, we would have a win-win situation in both, from both angles we would see uh, this, this solution, design solution could be seen as, as positive, as ethically correct. Again, if we dig deeper into the story, we will figure out, hey, who is keeping all, the, all this collective data of menstruating women? What happens with all that data? Where is it stored? Is it in the cloud? Do I own that data still? The role of the designer is to assure us, or at least do his or her uttermost, to make us believe that this data is safe, that this data is not used in a wrong way or something like that, right? So it's again, having doubting, having many, many ethical concerns is good. 
to make the design better and better and better and better and better. Another example, parental control. We delegate so much of our parenthood now <laughs> onto some algorithm and filters running on the, in the operating system of our computer and our smartphone and social media platforms. Do we really know how these systems work? What are, what are the principles of classifying explicit content, right? What, 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 what is allowed, what is not allowed? We need to include the parents much more in this process of actually validating what's good for, for children and what not. That's not the case now. There is, uh, we trust, of course, we have, we trust, but do, are we really in included as parents in this process? Is there enough transparency of how these things work? Um, so, uh, the designers are, of course, uh, in need of, uh, uh, of a better education in the field of ethics as well, to be able to provide such solutions that do not raise too many concerns from the side of the user. Screen time. What I find interesting that a lot of the ethical, moral uh, functionalities are now embedded in the platform. So, do you know like when you have a pack of cigarettes and there is a label on it warning you for this, about the side effects of smoking? You can get cancer, it's not good for your health and so on. Now we have screen time. Notifying us from time to time that our average use of our time of procrastinating is like five to six hours per day we may begin to think, okay, is this really good for us? Maybe we should do some sports or give some more attention to people physically next to us rather than chatting with someone far away. So these are new practices in which certain ethical or moral decisions are already embedded on the platform itself. I'm not saying that every app should have a warning <laughs> about its side effects, but I think we can learn a lot of, uh, about that. Do we create enough of alternatives? Do we customize the design that we use? Can we uh, be warned, yeah, in some cases about the side effects? I think this will have to be uh, taken into consideration. And I call it humane technology. Humane with an E at the end. So it's not just good, efficient, practical, functional technology, but it's a good technology. It's good for humankind. It's good for us. That's a technology that will be more sensitive to our needs, more uh, empathetic, maybe even compassionate, <laughs> um, more inclusive, more careful, more caring, more good, and so on and so on and so on. And of course, what obviously needs to happen is a reform of design education. It cannot be that ethics are absent in educational programs at, at art universities and design schools around the world. Otherwise, we end up in the reality of the black mirror. I'm not sure if we really want that. Thank you for your attention.